Okay, so here are some of the configurations. Here are the configurations that we're going to use on the switch to defend against some of these types of attacks and basically to configure the switch for optimal um, security scenarios. So we're going to go through some of these commands right here and you can see I've got a, a list here of commands that we're going to use and we're going to use them in Packet Tracer on mostly on this switch right here S1 so we're going to work with S1 what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to cover um, the uh, management controls access control of the switch I'm not going to go into passwords and user accounts and um, remote access I've done that in previous videos what I'm going to focus on is this area down here the VLAN security layer 2 protocol security and switch port security alright let's get started in Packet Trace, what we're going to do is we're going to try to run through this list. We're going to basically um, apply a level of security by essentially running through this list and then putting in the commands necessary to do these steps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to go into switch 1. You can see that switch 1 right now, we've got three users attached to the switch on uh, Fast Ethernet 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3. Each one of these users is going to be a different um, VLAN. Okay, and then we have two gigabit ports here that are going to be used for trunk links that are going to that are going to connect to other switches. So we have a scenario here where we have um, a situation where we have multiple switches and we have the potential for loops. So spanning tree protocol needs to be used to shut down uh, switching loops here. So let's go into the switch and start doing some of these commands now. We'll open up the switch. I'm going to go to command line mode here and you can see I don't have any access control on the switch, no password set, so I'm not dealing with that this time. Um, what I will do though is change the host name to S1 so that you can see that it's S1 that we're dealing with which is this switch right here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show VLAN and I want to do that of course from privileged mode though show VLAN and to take a look at our VLANs and you can see that by default all of the ports FA01 including the two gigabit ports they're all in VLAN 1 which is the default VLAN so by default all these ports are in VLAN 1 now also the native VLAN is in VLAN 1 and the management VLAN is in VLAN 1 management control information is sent over VLAN 1 so these are the defaults and what we want to do is, is an attacker would know that, would know that, hey, if this switch has not been configured, everything's in VLAN 1, I can attack management through VLAN 1. So what we want to do is we want to change this so that not all of these ports are in VLAN 1. And I'll show you something else. If we do a show interfaces switch port, I did a show interfaces tab, SW tab to get to switch port, you can see that right here and starts off with, um, with port 1 here, fast ethernet 0, 01, that the port is enabled by default and it, administrative mode it's in dynamic auto mode so it is in an auto negotiation mode and it could turn into a trunk so if we basically sent it um, 802.1q or dynamic trunking protocol DTP information this port could switch into a trunk right now and it you can see here that um, the encapsulation it has dot one q um, configured it's got uh, native VLAN it's got negotiation of trunking is on so it could basically turn into a trunk and then it could be used to attack the network it's in VLAN 1 native mode VLAN you can see is also one trunking native mode VLAN 1 um, so we need to we need to deal with that so that's what we're going to deal with first so I'll hit control C to exit out of that mode and now I'm in privilege mode I'll go to uh, global config mode conf t and now I'm in global config mode and what I'm going to do is I'll say interface or short for interface int range fa0 slash 1 through 24 and that puts me into config interface range mode and so now I'm configuring all 24 ethernet ports and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say switch port mode access and now I've manually configured the ports for 
access mode. So now they're in user mode, access mode. Now they're not going to um, turn into trunks, essentially, right? So just to verify that, if we do Control C and then go back and do Show Interfaces Switch Port, you'll see that administrative mo mode now is now static access, operation mode static access, and negotiation of trunking is off. So just by doing that, we um, create it so that these ports, and do Control C again to get out of that, cannot jump into um, trunking mode. Now I'm going to go back conf t into global config mode and I'll go in interface range uh, port 0, 1 to 24 again and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say after I've done that I'm going to say switch port access VLAN and I'm going to put them all into VLAN let's say 22. All right and you can see that I didn't have a VLAN 22 so it actually created it on the fly. Now you might be saying well why did he put it in VLAN 22? We have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 and VLAN 30 but by default what I want to do is I want to manually configure all user ports as access ports and then I do not want to use the default VLAN or VLAN 1 so I'm gonna put all of the ports on the switch into an unused VLAN so essentially VLAN 22 is is going to be used for my unused ports right so for unused ports we're going to use VLAN 22 so now what we want to do is we want to disable CDP on all ports also CDP is useful if you have um, a situation where your clients are using voice over IP and they've got let's say uh, VoIP phones so then you'd have a phone attached to the switch port and then from that phone you could attach your computer so in that case CDB could be pretty useful for um, getting necessary information from let's say the Cisco phone to help configure it if we're not using digital phones here um, voice over IP phones, Cisco phones then we're just going to disable CDP so we'll go back in here and let's do that right so let's do a quick uh, question mark here and we see we see here CDP right we can see some of the commands here that we can use so we could say no or we could say CDP and then a question mark and then there's CDP enable right we don't want to enable it so we're not going to do that so we'll say no and then a question mark and then there's CDP and then a question mark and then enable so no CDP enable and that's going to shut down CDP let's just double check that against our command list here no CDP enable okay so the next two commands that we're going to do are spanning tree port fast and spanning tree BPDU guard enable so it's recommended that if you have access ports right and these are access ports right here the ports that on this switch that attach to these users are called access ports right we put them into access mode as opposed to the ports that go from switch to switch which are trunks right so these are access ports and it's recommended that you put enable them uh, enable port fast on all those access ports now what's that going to do port fast is going to allow the ports to go from essentially um, a blocking mode or disabled mode essentially to a forwarding mode and skipping listening and learning mode right and we don't really need to have them listen and learn because they're not going to be receiving information from other switches negotiations let's say root bridge negotiations on a trunk port from another switch uh, bridge protocol data units BPDUs in other words so they don't really need to listen because there's no other switch on the line talking to them so they can go immediately into forwarding mode they don't necessarily need to do a lot of listening and learning so what we can do is span spanning tree um, and then we'll do a question mark spanning tree port fast we can see is there another command we need put a question mark disable right no we want to um, enable it right and we're not these are not trunks so we're just going to do spanning tree port fast right we get a warning that port fast should only be used for ports that are going to be used in um, access mode right well we're putting this on all of our ports right now or at least all of our fast ethernet ports because we're not using them as trunk ports right now 
So we're envisioning them all being, let's say, access ports. And then what we'll do is we'll say spanning tree, and instead of port fast, we'll do a question mark here, did an up arrow, spanning tree, and this time we're going to do BPDU guard. And BPDU guard, and then we'll put a question mark, and we're going to need to do enable. Okay, so spanning dash tree, BPDU guard enable. So after we do the spanning tree port fast command, we do the spanning tree BPDU guard enable command. And what's that going to do? That is going to say, hey, well, we're putting on all of our access ports port fast, which will enable us to jump straight to forwarding mode, skipping listening learning. And with the BPDU guard, what that will do is it will enable it that if an attacker was to, let's say, mangle packets and try to pretend to be a switch and try to send us BPDUs, bridge protocol data units, which are used in STP, right, for establishing who is the root bridge or the root switch in uh, STP negotiations, right, if this guy becomes an attacker and tries to send us uh, funny packets, right, with BPDUs in them, then it, when it hits the port, we've got BPDU guard enabled, it will shut down the port. It'll say basically, hey, we're not supposed to receive BPDUs on this port, we're shutting you down. This is an attack. This attacker could try to basically mangle packets and send those to us, or the computer could try to, let's say, let's say he has his own switch and try to drop a switch onto the network and try to send trunking information across, right? Try to establish himself as the root bridge, right? And we don't want that to happen because this is supposed to be an access port, not a trunk port. So we defend against that by using this BPDU guard command. So if we look at our switch, we've entered that command. The last thing that we can do is we could also just then shut down all those ports, right? So now we've actually shut them down. So if we now go do a control C, go to privilege mode and do a show run, our running config, you can see that faster than 01 is part of VLAN 22, which is unused. It's an access port. It's not in auto mode. CDP is not enabled, spanning tree is in port fast, BPDU guard is enabled, and it's shut down. So now these ports are shut down and they're also configured in a more secure posture. And that's kind of what we wanted, right? Now, now that we've shut everything down and we've basically put all these ports into um, VLAN 22, what we want to do now is configure specifically ports 1, 2, and 3 for their respective VLANs, and that's what we're going to do next.